Hello everyone, today I have something a bit different for you all. It is a look at Taz Wanted's debug menu. Um, I know this seems to be a bit out of nowhere, but I've come to find out that Taz Wanted has a very extensive debug menu, probably one of the most extensive debug menus I've ever seen. I love debug menus in games. Uh, they offer you a little look inside the game and how it works and all the different features. Uh, now this debug mode in particular only works on the uh, the European GameCube uh, version of the game. Uh, it doesn't work on any other version because there are no codes to activate it on any other version yet. However, I do believe every version of the game has this debug menu somewhere on it still. Uh, so with that being said, if you look in the description, you'll be able to find the AI code to use uh, to um, to use it. Um, like I said, it has to be the European GameCube version of the game. So if you press L and R, you'll be able to access it. And as you can see here, it's very much like a file system you will find on a Windows PC. Now, uh, file, of course, if you drop this down, we'll have um, three options. You have exit, the build date of the game, and the engine used. Selecting any of these will just simply exit out of it. Uh, video, we have the options of NTSC 60 hertz and PAL 50 hertz. Um, selecting, of course, the PAL 50 hertz will revert the game to PAL, and like I said before, 50 hertz. Um, as you can see here. Now the game is slowing down a bit. Uh, this is a problem with recording Dolphin. Uh, hopefully it doesn't look that bad on the actual video. But with that being said, we are now playing at 50 hertz. Although I have the uh, Dolphin a bit overclocked, so it doesn't exactly look like 50 hertz right now. So with that being said, as you can see, you can switch back as well. So with view, we have the in-game view, the object viewer, and the fly cam. Now the object viewer doesn't seem to work as it gives us a gray screen and nothing really can be done here. So we're going to switch back to in-game view. Now if we go to fly cam, this will give us a, uh, a sort of a fly cam where you can move around with the camera and just survey the level itself, um, which is pretty cool. It will give you a better look of the levels itself and gives you just a good scenery to look at. As the game itself, I still think looks rather nice. So with scenes, we have the options of picking separate uh, levels in the game, miscellaneous levels being stuff such as the language select and front end. The enemy playpen, I'm assuming, is where they were testing enemy behaviors. It does not load anymore. It will crash the game if you try to load it. But of course, you have the zoo levels with some mistranslations here, or I shouldn't say mistranslations, but spelling errors, actually, like Ice King Dome, which is not the actual name of the level. These seem to be uh, placeholder names. Levels such as Taz Haunted are called Ghost Town and etc. Um, so we have vehicle levels, destructions, these are all the bonus levels you can unlock by getting all uh, most of the sandwiches in a level. Uh, map will crash the game. Not entirely sure what that is. Test map, no scene, and object viewer only seem to load up the title screen. They'll just boot you back there. This is the Tasmanian intro cutscene. Uh, this is the cutscene to the intro of the actual game. And the department store demo level, I'm assuming, was a level they showed off in kiosks for the uh, game. Uh, and it's the department store level, that's Looningdale's. Loading this has the same effect as test map, null scene, and object view, only it boots you back to the title screen. So for an example, we could go to Zoo, and we can load up, say, for example, the hub. And doing so will make the game load the hub. And it'll go through the cutscene, and here we are, we're at the hub. Simple but effective. So we go to options, and we have a bit more things here. We have a debug D-pad. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I haven't done a lot of testing on it, um, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. Versus CPU seems to crash the game. It sends you to a two-player menu and says to plug in a two-player, uh, a second control, I should say. It doesn't seem to work correctly, though, and it seems to crash the game. Toggling split screen mode does not work. Even if you try to activate it, nothing actually happens. The Chris Cam is a camera, I'm assuming is the default camera that I'm assuming uh, a developer named Chris made as it seems to be the default camera. Show Invisible will show... I'm not entirely sure what any of this is actually. This is very... Um... If someone knows what this would be, I would greatly appreciate knowing what it is. Uh, it shows boxes, random boxes, and just white. 
it also slows down the game tremendously so there is that um, so we're going to shut it off now we have a thing called timer bars now timer bars basically gives you an idea of what what's going on behind the camera and as you can tell I'm not entirely sure what is happening here but something is happening uh, that is for certain um, now instance names these are an interesting thing right here I'm not entirely sure what these are but they seem to just show off every object and what it's called um, and it does slow the game down a bit uh, but of course there's Tweety Trigger 02 and it basically gives an information about objects more or less and their sizes and such which is pretty interesting uh, and now we have show destructibles now this is actually interesting what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna load an actual level we're going to load um, let's say we load up let's load up Grand Canyon or as it's called here Granny Canyon of course the names on there like I said before are most likely placeholders and are just there for easier um, navigation So here we are in this level, one of my uh, favorites, especially because of the music. So, first off, we want to show off the destructibles. Now, every level has destructibles. Even the hub worlds have destructibles in some areas. Now, doing that will give you basically... Um, re I'm not entirely sure what this is called, but it basically points out to all the destructible objects in the game. Or in the level, I should say, at the current time. Now food um, obviously will do what the destructibles is and it will point out where the food are as you can see here. Well actually it doesn't show off where the food is. It actually points kind of away from it in a sense. It still points towards it though. Um, instance zero uh, zones. These I'm assuming refer to... Well I'm not entirely sure what they refer to. Like I said I'm no game developer. I have no idea what these would be used for but it is an interesting thing nonetheless now here's an interesting thing I'm sure people have seen already um, and I'm interested in uh, record demo now selecting this will actually reload the level and you're actually able to record a demo at least I think you are uh, what may be happening is that the functions to record a demo are technically still there but it doesn't actually record anything as you can see here, everything is loaded in and it is recording, uh, or at least it says it is recording a demo. Um, and of course, you just press start to end the demo. Um, this was probably used for recording purposes, like say for a kiosk, for example, if they're showing off the game uh, anywhere or at E3. Uh, pressing start will end the demo. The thing is, you can't actually play back that demo. If you try to play the demo, whether you select uh, play demo or play host demo, as I will show off in a few seconds, uh, the game will crash. It doesn't seem like the actual replay function is there anymore. And what's happening is that it's just remnants of it. There's no need to keep it into the in the final game. So if we go to options and we hit play demo or play host demo, it will freeze the game. Now, with Fog, this is an interesting one, actually. And for this, we're actually going to go to the... Uh, Taz Haunted, which is called Ghost Town in this uh, scenario. Uh, Taz Haunted is also a very uh, well-remembered level uh, because of its um, horror nature of it. And it's a very creative level and it has a very good uh, soundtrack. Um, but it also has something very interesting um, to talk about when it comes to the fog effect. Now the fog effect is not something new to debug modes. Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex also had a fog feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to options. And as you can see, this level has a very thick fog. It's probably the level with the thickest fog in the game. So with that, we're going to decrease um, the fog, the minimum of it and the maximum. And doing so will give us a very Superman 64-esque uh, fog. And we're going to decrease all of the RGB values to it. Um, and of course, you can do anything you want with this. You can increase or decrease it. But for this example, we're going to make it so the level has a black uh, fog to give it a different look and a different appearance. And once we do that, we'll have black. But of course, it's a bit too close to us, so we're going to decrease, oh, I'm sorry, increase it a bit. And doing so will give us a 
a bit of a different look on the level, um, a bit darker. Of course, the uh, background um, is still the same color, so it kind of doesn't match entirely. But it gives a different view of the uh, level itself. It gives you a different look on how it is art-wise. Now, the next thing I want to show off has to do with the background. So we have to pick a level that um, will give us a good view of the background. So we're going to pick the aqua level in the zoo area, which is uh, Looney Lagoon. Um, and the fog effect will change back to normal after the load screen. The load screen actually exhibits the fog effects for some reason. But once we go to a new area, all the fog uh, presets will be set back to normal. So we're here in the, um, I guess you would say, the beach level of the game. So when we go to options, there will be something called background. And going in here, we can actually change the height of the background. because, As you can see, it will raise and decrease the, um, not entirely sure what this would be for used for, but I'm assuming it's just for the positioning of the uh, background itself. You can also move it to the left and to the right. Now, music's interesting. Uh, hitting this will actually disable the music in the game. Uh, once you reload a scene, the music will not load. And the debug window does nothing. There doesn't seem to be any actual change there. So we have some power-ups. We have the burp can. This basically lets us apply any of the power-ups in the game to Taz on a whim. There's the Hiccup Can, which we'll actually show off uh, in a little bit. Uh, the Chili Pepper, which um, of course gives you the uh, flame breath of sorts. Um, once you activate a, uh, a power-up, you have to wait till it wears off before you can activate another. So in this case, we're actually going to go to Zuni Tunes, which is labeled as Safari in here. And we're actually going to show off a little thing that uh, a developer is probably hidden. Probably the artist, most likely, in uh, this level. And uh, doing so, we're going to have to use the hiccup can, um, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to load this up and get to that specific area. Uh, so we have this part here that we're going to have to look through. While this thing is cycling through, uh, we can look at this again. and. As I said before, you can have all these items, the bubble gum. In fact, if I activate it here, I think I'm able to skip through this. There we go. <laughs> so this obviously... Oh, oh, I guess not. Oh, okay, there we go. So now we're just going to get through the level. There's going to be some slowdown here and there. So over here, you're going to notice that there is a door in this area back here. And there's this area with the uh, truck in the background. Now, uh, one of the things that Taz wanted is how the physics work. If you're spinning in place, then you uh, spin for a while and move in a certain direction. You're able to climb like that. Uh, this is very useful for speedrunning uh, because it can really break the game and get you up to these places. Unfortunately, it can't get us over that fence. However, if we go to power-ups and use the hiccup cam, uh, we can actually get through here. And doing so will get us over here onto this truck, but more importantly we can go over here and we'll notice that there are these, um, once Taz stops hiccuping, the effect wears off, there are these missing posters uh, for two, I'm assuming, developers on the game. Uh, most likely the artists, I'm assuming. But you can't usually see this in the main game, obviously. Uh, so that's that. Uh, optimization is an interesting one, and we can actually turn off the cartoon lighting, which uh, it, it's not really entirely noticeable. You're going to have to look uh, more so on Taz himself, but it does get rid of the lighting. And um, actually, something I do want to show off is if we go to the west level and go to, um, we're going to go to the hub actually. And we're actually going to show off what one of those power-ups can do in terms of like not, in a, not really breaking the game, but at least in terms of uh, doing something cool. So over here we can't obviously reach that, uh, but uh, if we use the bubblegum power-up we can. Obviously if you have a moon jump code, uh, you can also do this, but um, we don't have that enabled. Um, so doing this can get us over to um, uh, this cannon area, which is where we fight uh, Yosemite Sam uh, in the first battle with him anyway. Um, Got to be careful where we land here. There we go. And so we have to just actually... Um, I may have messed up, but luckily we can just use the 
bubble gum to get us back over to where we need to go. And of course, doing this will basically let you cross any Mesa there is. Um, and it's pretty cool. We can actually pop it right here, and there is no... Uh, well, actually, there was a death plane there. Okay. Well, the basic idea is that um, you can skip over death planes if you are lucky enough to, if you um, know how to get through them. Uh, so there is that. While I'm here, I might as well show off the outlines. Now, the outline's an interesting thing. Now, disabling the outlines actually needs to reset the entire level. The entire scene needs to be reloaded. And as you can see, the entire outline of Taz is just gone. This actually improves the frame rate as well. Um, and it basically gives it a Wind Waker look, as uh, people have told me, as, uh, as you can see. Now, the draw distance is an interesting thing. Now, if we try to disable the draw distance, you'll notice that the background actually gets closer to the, uh, the player, as you can see here. Um, so, as you can see, the background is just closer to the player, and that's how the draw distance works, basically, in this game. Of course, um, you can go the opposite way, which sends it way back into the, uh, into the level. Now, here's the most interesting thing we have here, well, one of the most, is the frame graph. Very much like you would see in a Digital Foundry video, there is a frame time graph. This ch uh, basically uh, is what, a uh, frame rate analysis, more or less. Um, right now, there's nothing that's really stressing the engine, so it's uh, basically running fine. Um, we would need to basically over uh, do it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn the... Uh, lining. First of all, we're going to turn the cartoon lining back on and the uh, outlines. This will give us a better uh, read time. Now, it still runs through the loading screens. It runs throughout everything. So now with this on, we have a better um, idea. If we spin around a bit, maybe we'll be able to get it to have an effect. But right now, it's running pretty much stable. There is no actual real reading here of it going down. So we might try to do something. In fact, let's try going back to the um, aqua level, which does have frame rate issues, it seems, on here. So let's take a look. Of course, the loading screen will have issues because it's loading. So it's going to show some uh, readings there, of course. <clears throat> so now that we're here, now you get a more of a well, reading here, if we uh, move around a bit, you can, uh... Actually, no, it's staying pretty stable, although there are a little dips here and there, it seems. But it seems to be running somewhat stable. But it does give out accurate readings. <clears throat> in real time. So if you ever want to do a Digital Foundry video, a makeshift Digital Foundry video, then this would be your, uh, your pick. <laughs> Uh, you can activate the debug menu anywhere, anywhere you want, including cutscenes, because they're all in-engine. You just can't uh, activate them during loading screens, basically. So we're going to go back over here, and we're going to uh, turn that off. Now, heap. Showing heap. I'm not entirely sure what this is doing. It does nothing, so there's not much to go on there. Now, the draw profile... Oops. My mistake. The draw profile... Seems to be some sort of color palette, but I'm not entirely sure what exactly it's doing, or what its purpose really is. But it's there. So we're almost done. We have cheats. Now, some of these cheats are actually pretty uh, simple. In fact, we're going to have to load up uh, a level. So let's load up... Let's load up a different one. Let's load up the uh, department store, which is Looning Deals. Um... <clears throat> Because some of the cheat codes in the game uh, that are available involve using uh, being in a level instead of a hub area. I only picked the hub areas just so I can stay a bit safe with this because you never know what some of these codes are going to do to the game. If it's going to make it freeze, going to cause any issues. So here we are in Looningdale's. Actually, we're going to, um, to help the frame rate out. We are going to disable the outlines. So for whatever reason you can't get Taz wanted, 
to run well on your computer for whatever reason they may be uh, disable the outlines it seems to improve the frame rate quite a bit the load times seem to be a bit iffy um, at times when you're using the debug menu uh, that may just be because of what I'm using um, as a device so uh, let's also disable the uh, cartoon line because I believe that has a thing for it too so for cheats um, there's finished level and complete posters. If you do complete posters, it will give you all the posters in the level. And it'll basically show you where the end of the level is and all that. Oops. And of course, uh, finish level does what you think it does. It finishes the level. All galleries, just will unlock all the galleries. Uh, simple stuff, uh, basic stuff. Digital watch gives you a watch. Um, I'm assuming this is supposed to do something, but I'm not entirely sure how to use it, but it is a thing. Um, uh, hopefully someone out there will be able to tell me what the digital watch does. Um, I vaguely remember it being a thing you can unlock, but I just don't remember it. Uh, turbo obviously makes the game go in turbo speed. Um, then there's also slow-mo, which obviously makes the game go very slow. And right under it is super slow-mo which does what you expect it makes the game go in super slow motion um, you get to see the animations a bit better of course um, there's invincibility some of these cheats are blocked off such as invisibility stereoscope and gray stereoscope I'm not entirely sure how to actually activate them I'm assuming they've just been cut out in the final game uh, Wilson is an interesting one probably someone on the development team added their face as a mask. Uh, on the back it says Acme Goth Mask and I'm assuming whoever this was obviously was a developer for the game in some form. It is still in the game. Um, of course. Uh, disable Whack in the Boxes. This is probably a save, uh, this is probably a huge, uh, huge plus for a lot of people because it disables the boxes from hitting you. Must be a, <laughs> so it really uh, uh, saves you the hassle of course we can turn that off and yeah we get sent out but uh put that back uh so motion blur is interesting this is not implemented the motion blur itself does have an effect on the game the game will now skip a bit when you're turning um uh obviously the motion blur itself wasn't implemented so you're not really getting that effect uh but it does show the game skipping a bit from it. So it was meant to be implemented at some point. Uh, costume will just award you the costume for that specific level. Um, the time splice ninja kick and the time uh, slice jump is what you have in the, uh, in the Samsonian museum level. So if you jump, you get one of those funky uh, animations where it just spins around the character very much like you would see in the Matrix. Uh, uh, next up is one that I'm very confused with. It's called Insomnia. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Um, it might have to do with enemies not waking up, but that enemy woke up, so I'm not entirely sure what Insomnia is. Um, it's possible, it just makes it so Taz doesn't sleep. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what this is meant for. All levels does what you think it does. Now, Alternative Shadows was never finished, and you can tell immediately as soon as you activate it. Um, because it is, uh, th there's no real, um, well, as you can see, it, 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 it doesn't seem to be functional. Actually, something interesting I do want to show off that I don't think I can show off here. If we go to, uh, we're actually going to go to the Ice Kingdom again. It's something I didn't show off with Wilson's uh, face. So we're going to show that off. His costume, whatever you want to call that hidden Easter egg thing. So in the snow level, you obviously leave a little uh, prints. Uh, so if we go to uh, Wilson again, you'll notice that your prints are actually t uh, actually his face now. So whatever this thing is, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but they went out of their way to put this guy in the game, in some form. So we go back to cheats. Now airbrush characters is interesting. It gives the characters an airbrush look, I'm assuming that is what it's doing. 
Um, I believe you have to reload a level, so we're going to reload uh, just the hub area again from Zoo. And it should give the characters a brushed look. I may have to re-enable some of the, uh, I guess, the outlines, I think, because it may not be able to be shown. Actually, uh, uh, y you may not be able to see it on the uh, actual video, but it does kind of give it a different look. Uh, we're going to put the lighting back on, and you kind of can see there is a, a difference in some form. Now most of these changes, well in fact all these changes, can't be actually saved, but uh... So you can't actually save any of these changes and uh, expect um, them to stay. Uh, no filtering gets rid of the filtering. Basically all the text and all of the textures will have no filtering on them. Uh, simple as that. Time freeze freezes the game. It literally just freezes the game. Ball mode, I'm not entirely sure what this does. Um, everything I've tried doesn't seem to give me any uh, clue on what ball mode does. Um, I could try reloading a level. Uh, so let me try just reloading this one to see if I somehow end up in the level in a ball form. I'm not entirely sure. It might just be that it wasn't implemented, and it probably wasn't implemented. Whatever ball mode was, it was probably maybe a mode where you're in that ball that you're in in Gladiatune, possibly. We don't know. Uh, show debug info. Surprisingly, it doesn't show anything. Uh, you would expect that. Um, now, here's a very interesting one. Cascam. This is literally a first-person view of the game, and it's a bit... It's a bit buggy. Um, the controls are very sensitive because it's still, you know, a very sensitive game to play. But it's very much... In a sense, it's kind of like Taz wanted VR. The only real issue here is, like I said, the controls are very finicky at times, and spinning causes the camera to zoom out like this, because obviously if there was a camera for you spinning, that would be a huge issue. Uh, it would get a lot of people sick, so there is that. But yes, the camera is a bit, and the controls are a bit um, off, but it is interesting to see that there is some type of first-person mode. So now we're getting into uh, the end of this with character and create enemy. With character, you have a list of objects which are the characters in the game, and selecting them will actually let you play as the character. Now uh, you can't move with some of them, so you're going to have to jump. Obviously, there's no animation for jumping, um, but pressing um, pressing the attack command will actually make the enemy do the animation. Um, pressing the uh, command to scare um, off enemies. Uh, with Taz just doesn't do anything and spinning will obviously uh, turn you back to cra uh, crash <laughs> Will turn you back to Taz um, But it's a very interesting um, uh, Function uh, we're gonna go through every character uh, Safari doesn't seem to change the character uh, Coyote uh, what's interesting is this doesn't seem to be the same coyote model that's in the cutscene in Wild West It seems to be a different one um he doesn't have any actual commands, though, because obviously he is just a, uh, I'm assuming he's just for cutscenes. Uh, you can run around with him. Uh, with every character that can run, if you, uh, stop running, he'll kind of do a glitch slide and always will be in that slide state, so you're gonna have to jump to stop it. Uh, we have the Spin Devil, which is just the arms of Taz when he's spinning. Um, which looks a bit freaky, I don't really like how it looks. Uh, Surf Devil, I'm assuming, is the surfing costume he has. They just have it in here for some reason. Uh, and same for the Safari. These are just costumes still left in here. Uh, we can be Daffy. And uh, he has his own little thing. Um, no animation, of course, because he's used in the Gladiatoons boss fight without any sort of animation. Um, it's actually possible that this Coyote is an early model for him. It's quite possible. I'm not entirely sure, now that I think about it. Uh, Gossamer. We can be Gossamer. Um, and he looks a bit, uh... As you can tell, the characters look a bit off from some sides because you're not meant to see him from that side, so Gossamer looks a bit off. Um, after him, we have the Keeper. Now, these are the guards of the game. And yes, they can run, they have those animations, and they can do that animation. <laughs> I did I did not expect that to happen. I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't think that I would get caught like that. Um, <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> so, when you do that animation, you just get caught. 
<laughs> what a... It's quite the irony. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So, there's that. We just discovered something new there. Um, so, there's Sylvester, who's uh, used in, um, you know, the cutscenes, of course, as well. He doesn't have any animations uh, to use. He just has a running animation that you see at the beginning of the game. Um, uh, we have Tweety, who uh, can't ru uh, doesn't have any way to run, but um, and doesn't have any animations either. Uh, next up, we have Tycoon. This is Yosemite Sam is his Tycoon outfit. He does have that animation of hitting, uh, hitting you if you get near him, and all that jazz. And he has a little jumping. He actually has a jumping animation as well. So he's actually a pretty fleshed out character, and he doesn't do the. Uh, he doesn't do the, uh, oh, actually does do the, uh, stutter there. But his, his character and animation, since he's a boss fight, is actually kind of fleshed out a bit. It's my, it's quite possible you can use him in the regular game, but you're gonna have to spin at some point, so, uh, you will turn back to, uh, Taz. And then there's regular Yosemite, he, uh, doesn't have any animations. This is just the one from the cutscenes. We have an alligator. Now, uh, this is supposed to be in the safari level, uh, Zuni Tunes, and he does have an animation for when he jumps out. However, the animation doesn't seem to happen. Uh, <laughs> but we we have a nice animation here from jumping. Next up, after the alligator, we have the shark from uh, Looney Lagoon, and uh, he does have this animation. After the shock, we have, yes, the elephant. The elephant from the Elephant Pong level. As you can tell, there is no real way of stopping him, first off. Alright. And he doesn't have any animations. So after the elephant, we have Mr. Fudd, which is Alma Fudd in his uh, referee outfit for the Gladiatoons boss fight. Um, just stop him. No animations. Uh, after him, we have uh, the Catcher. Uh, which, uh, I'm assuming is what the Keeper is, but they just changed the name, as he does not load. After that, we have the Ape, who also does not load. Um, the, uh, this is the monkeys in the Zuni Tomb levels. Um, can't see them as they're positioned down under the ground. I'm gonna try the Ape one more time. Yeah, the Ape doesn't seem to load, for some reason. Uh, the brown, this is supposed to be the brown bear, it's labeled as bro bear, and, or brow bear. And, uh, the eyes are closed, but it does have an animation of that. Kind of creepy looking. Uh, okay, this is the pirate ape that does the same animation over and over, but has this attack. It can't move, uh, so it just kind of looks around and does that animation constantly. Uh, the security bot, this is the, uh, in the Samsonian levels, um, has that little animation. And we have the, uh, uh, guard, actually, this is the guard from the Samsonian levels as well. There's that little thing there. Uh, next up we have the phone box. Yes, you can be the phone box. Um, in every sense, this is why you want to use debug mode. Uh, you can be the construction bot from the uh, construction level, uh, the the Bank of San America, I believe is what it's called. And it has, you know, the animation. It's shooting, whatever it shoots. Um, and we have construction uh, worker, uh, who has his moves, his animations, I'm sure of it. Yep. After him, we have Beak. This is one of those... Yeah, this is an odd character, because I don't remember seeing this character in the game, but he has animations. I'm assuming he's in, obviously, the Wild West levels. This is also from the Wild West levels. Uh, he has this shooting animation. Oh, Dynamite. I gotcha. Obviously, nothing actually happens with the Dynamite. Uh, the Demon Dog from the levels... Um, not all the characters are available. You notice uh, the a dog, the attack dogs from the Loadingdale level is not in here. And the construction worker is in here twice for some reason. Um, but that's that. The most complete uh, character in here is definitely uh, the Tycoon Yosemite Sam, as he has a jumping animation. He has a form of uh, some form of an attack, 
So I actually want to go to a scene and see if he really works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to... Uh, we're going to find a level that is a bit easy to try this with. Um, it's kind of a bit difficult because... We want something where we can get to... Actually, we could just go to the, uh, this level and see if he, how he works. Just as a test, just to see how well he uh, can function. Because he does seem to have quite a lot there. Um, hopefully we won't have to sit through this again. If we do, we'll just use the bubblegum effect. Okay, we don't. So, what we do is we go to character and we go to tycoon Sam. And, I mean, as you can see, he does have an animation. Uh, the slowdown is tremendous for some reason right now. But here we have one of the signs. And uh, it says, pre if we just stop ourselves here, does this destroy it? It does. So we actually can destroy our own signs. It's actually rather neat. So, um, I'm going to go back to the hub for our last real thing in the game, in the debug mode itself, which is the create enemy function. Now, it's not as simple as, say, you can create your own enemy. You're basically just spawning an enemy. So, for example, we'll go over here, and zoo enemies, polar bear. And um, it depends on where we're standing, where we can activate it. So, actually, we're going to try to put him right here. And uh, it's very finicky, obviously. We can't place a keeper over there. Um, in terms of where it's placed, it's usually in front of you. Um, we can place a keeper, though. It really does depend on where you are. If you try to place a city character, uh, well, actually, it'll kind of get glitched and post a uh, keeper instead. Um, so it really does depend on where you are. We could try putting an alligator, but uh, as you can see, we don't really see an alligator. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to go to the west hub and see if we can place anyone here. It really does seem dependent on which area you're in, for which character and object it'll load, and sometimes it isn't. It's very finicky, but um, I'm gonna try the Wild West area. So we're gonna go to an open area like here, and just place one of the Wild West enemies. Like, say, for example, the Beak enemy. And there it is. I'm not entirely sure what the Beak enemy is supposed to do, but you can stack them. Uh, which is interesting. Um, so as you can see, you can't stack them. It will cause the game to slow down, of course, because it's not meant to have those enemies there. Um, if you try to put a zoo enemy like a polar bear, it just won't happen because we're not in that area. We can put a demon dog. Oh, maybe we can't put a demon dog. Yeah, see, like I said, it's very finicky. It, it, it's very dependent on quite a lot of things, actually. Um... But yeah, as you can see, I guess it does depend on what level you're in. So, for example, let's say we go to, uh, for a change of pace, we'll go to Tasmania. Which is the final level in the game. And is Taz's home, basically, before it's turned into an amusement park by Yosemite Sam. Well, actually, it has been turned into, not before. Uh, and with here, we'll be able to place the uh, actual uh, enemies, because we're in this level. So as the frame rate kind of struggles here, actually this might be a good time to turn on that frame rate analysis actually. So the graph, if we walk around here, yeah, maybe, yeah, ah, there we go. You can see where the game, uh, right there, where the game will have that jump to 30 frames per second because it's a V-Sync game. So you'll see that. So anyway, create enemy, Taz enemies, and you can create a tribal chief and another tribal chief, and so on and so forth. It looks like you can put down a Mecha Tweety, but it doesn't seem to happen because we're not in that level, but I'm actually curious about that, so I'm actually gonna try doing that by going to the final boss in the game, which is Tweety, the Hind Hindenbird. And the question is whether or not this will work. If we create enemy and go to Tweety, as you can see, we can create multiple Tweeties, it seems. Um, smaller versions of Tweety, mind you, but they are there, and you can tell the game right now is having a 
really hard time running. Um, but that's really it. Uh, that's it for the debug menu. We went over quite a lot with it. Uh, there's other things I'm sure that are in this debug menu that can be activated. Right now I'm just trying to over... basically overstress the game as much as I can by putting as many tweeties here. And as you can see the frame rate is dying down a lot. Um, but like I said, uh, the AR code to activate this is in the description. Uh, you have to press L and R at the same time to activate it, and uh, you'll get this menu. It's very easy to navigate through with the control stick or D-pad. I suggest D-pad, of course. And um, like I said, it's a very interesting look into the game. It's definitely something that's not been documented yet, um, and it really should be given a look because it is very extensive in what you can do here. Um, now that we're running at a very, very low frame rate, um, this is really, really bad. <laughs> with all that being said, uh, with all that being said, I should say, uh, thank you all for watching what <laughs> is the destruction of Taz Wanted. Um, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you have a good day or night.